Teresa Fong. If you ever had suffered or you think you are suffering from a frozen shoulder, I think you'd be really interesting, interested in hearing what I have to say. I had the same experience. I didn't even know what it was, but what happened was I found that I was limited to be able to pull up my left arm. It hurt. It hurt in the morning, it hurt in the evening when I went to sleep. So I searched everywhere and I didn't know who I could see to take care of this until one day I came across an ad from Trigenics and I called Dr. Austin's office and I asked him, can you tell me a little bit about what is this frozen shoulder and what I can do to take care of it? I uh, went in for a free consultation and um, booked an appointment and all of a sudden he was able to fix my shoulder. From not being able to lift it up this much, I can lift it up this much. So it's only been a few months and I've, the pain has diminished and it totally changed my life. I got my life okay. back with Chai what, what I have found and I've reduced, uh, I'm the first in the world to develop this procedure. It's called the frozen shoulder dissection procedure. And uh, I have successfully restored ranges of motion to numerous uh, frozen shoulders, probably 100 over the past uh, four years. Uh, we will be publishing a paper on it. And one of the things that I've found is that uh, in probably 90% of the cases, there's some type of disc lesion at C5-6. Those are the, that's the nerve root level where the nerves are that go into the shoulder girdle, the muscles of the shoulder girdle, supplying those muscles with the necessary information to uh, function properly. And uh, if the nerve supply to those muscles is, is not correct, the muscles will not behave properly, they'll not be able to pull properly, they won't have as much strength against force, and if force is, in, is, is applied against those muscles, um, where they would normally be able to accept the force with the nerve uh, interference created by the disc lesion, uh, which is often seen on x-ray as degenerative disc disease, and, and then you see it on the MRI as a disc lesion. Uh, that interference will lead to susceptibility of injury of the musculature that can't handle the stress or of the tendons, usually of the tendons. It may cause a tearing, it may also just cause an inflammatory condition, which in turn can precipitate uh, a, uh, a carrying a, a, an effusion of, of inflama inflammation throughout the shoulder girdle into the capsule and into those areas, into the, what we call the bursa, which in turn cause some degree of adhesing or adhesions to develop where the bursa or the capsule begins to sort of stick together. And then the frozen shoulder develops. So I'm looking at the x-rays here of the patient that we're just about to treat, and I can see clearly one, two, three, four, five, six, that at C5-6 he definitely has a problem. And so that, that, and he also has a complete reversal of the normal neck curvature at this point. So if we were to take an MRI, we will probably find some type of a disc lesion disc herniation, disc bulge with some compression of the nerves that go into the shoulder, making it more susceptible to what we refer to as a frozen shoulder. So we're about to begin the procedure. Uh, I'm going to start in the next few minutes. The patient has just gone to see their uh, medical doctor. The doctor has, uh, or the doctor that we work with actually at this clinic, he's put injections into the front and the back of the shoulder into the capsule um, with some anesthetic so that the patient doesn't feel as much discomfort or pain during the procedure because otherwise without anesthetic it can be very painful. We do perform the procedures without anesthetic or we perform them with uh, anesthetic depending upon the patient's preference. Sometimes the anesthetic can also be just given orally rather than with a needle uh, and that's up again to the patient and to their, uh, you know, that's it, entirely up to them. So that's basically it and uh, we're going to get started with the uh, Trigenics Frozen Shoulder Procedure. You'll not be coming in on the actual procedure but we are going to do the good shoulder first, okay. straight up sideways. Straight up all the way up? All the way up. Okay. Okay. Don't turn the hand. Keep it okay. this way. Keep it with your yeah, okay. Keep it just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's about as high as that one goes. Okay. Okay. Now keep that one up. Keep that one. Let's see the other one now. Okay. No, no, keep the other one up. Keep that one up. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's hard to coordinate. I'm just too out of that. Okay. 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 Well, that's as far as that goes. Yeah, we're stopping there. It okay. seems. Okay. I'm about to do the procedure here now. If I actually hold it down, just relax. I'm just lifting oh, yeah. it myself. Okay. I'm lifting it myself. Okay. That's about the end point there. Yeah. If I hold this one down. So this is the this is my good shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the good shoulder. And here's the one that the doctor Austin just worked on. This one, that shoulder. 
that you saw you you saw the before before it was locked just in here right I couldn't mm -hmm. I, and I went and had the Lift them both together again. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's there a heck of a lot yeah. better. Right? Yeah. She's, she's on. Yeah. So we're going to see the, the shoulder. That's the good shoulder. Let's go. We just finished doing the procedure. And now we're going to see the shoulder we just did the procedure on. Beautiful. And now both of them together. That's so nice. easy. Wow, that's, nice. that's good. That's wow, nice. you wouldn't be able to do that across the shoulder. When was the last time you did a push-up? Oh, a long time ago, man. Oh, yeah. months. This is the <laughs> procedure. <laughs> and uh, we it's have a ha standing. fairly happy patient here. He's able to move his arm. Um, and uh, he's going to get his life back, right? Yeah, so let's to that. raise that arm up. Let's see it. Here we go. And all the way up to the top now. Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Olo Austin, the founder of Trigenics Functional Neurology and of the Trigenics Frozen Shoulder Procedure. Today, you will already have had your procedure done, and we're going to show you and discuss with you ways in which you can speed up your recovery so that you're able to get your life back again quickly. With me here today is Lisa Fung. She was a frozen shoulder patient very recently, and she attained full recovery in a very, very quick period of time. She was so taken by the procedure and by her ability to once again be able to move her arm freely and be able to live life without pain that she also took an interest in helping others. She's going to be showing you some of the exercises that you need to know and need to be doing following your procedure. So Lisa's here with us today and she was suffering with a frozen shoulder for about a good six months. Her arm, this arm here, was, well, show me the level, it was that level. And anything above that, Lisa was excruciating and painful. I couldn't have been higher. Couldn't. Immediately after the procedure, where was the arm? Um, and how long did that take? All of five minutes? Five minutes. The thing is, even though we're able to restore your range of motion very quickly, in a short period of time with the revolutionary Trigenics frozen shoulder procedure, certain changes will have taken place in the musculature, the tendons, and even the nerve supply of your shoulder because of the immobility and the lack of use due to the frozen shoulder syndrome. That means that over about the next six weeks, you're still going to be needing to do specific exercises on a daily basis, more frequently in the first three days, but you're gonna to need to do them on a daily basis in order to be able to make sure that that frozen shoulder doesn't return because there are certain kind of sticky adhesions that develop in the shoulder and we don't want to give them a chance to come back again. You don't want to have the procedure done a second time unless it's really needed. And because you want to be able to basically carry on your life without any restrictions or without any pain whatsoever. So that's going to need about six weeks of specific exercises that we're about to go through right now for your full recovery. Okay, the first thing that you need to be doing in the first three days, for three days, on the hour, every single hour for three days following your procedure, is the wall climb. Now, there are some patients that the procedure is so incredibly successful that they don't need to do the wall climb. They can simply raise their arm up and down. But if it's painful still after the procedure and you feel that it's somewhat difficult to actually lift your own arm without any assistance, you will do the wall climb. Let's do the wall climb first. The wall climb involves you standing exactly um, perpendicular to the wall facing in a perpendicular direction from the wall with your arm directly out at your side, directly out at your side. So you're not standing this way, you're standing this way. Now the most important thing to do is to simply crawl up, pulling yourself up the wall with your fingers. Now as you do that, you step into the wall more and more and more until you finally get to the top of the wall. And remember, this was the frozen shoulder that Lisa just had treated and corrected only a month ago. Okay, so here she is. Now, 
Some of you may only be able to get up to here. There may be a little gap here. What you want to be doing is you want to be, when you get up to his, the top, as high as you can possibly get, you want to be pushing down against the wall using the muscles on the underside of your arm to try to push down against the wall for six seconds as hard as you can. So she's going to push down against the wall for six seconds. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And then, actually let's start here. Okay, let's try that again. Go ahead and so you breathe, first you breathe in through your nose and stomach. As you're breathing out, you do your pushing. As you breathe out, control your breath. Make a little sound to be able to control it like this. So she's going to be breathing out. As she breathes out, she's pressing down. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Now when she finishes pressing, she'll try to push herself into the wall a little bit further to, to lessen this gap that's here that you may have. Okay? And she'll try to get up a little bit higher immediately after she stops pushing and breathing. Then she's going to start again. Breathing in, out, pushing, 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 pushing and relax and then she push, tries to push herself to the point where she's completely against the wall in the manner that she is now with absolutely no space between her and the wall and then she continues to push from that position and going again breathing in and out 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 and 6,000 what she'll do then is she'll step away from the wall keeping the hand there and now what she's going to do is she's going to lower her arm herself slowly. There will be certain places without the help of the wall. Now in some cases you may at certain point need the help of the wall. In which case you'll come down the wall crawling. If you don't need the help of the wall then do it on your own. Coming down slowly. There will be certain range of motions that will be painful and difficult to do. And there will be other ranges that will be easy. If you don't need the help of the wall, don't use the wall. If you need the help of the wall, use it. Now some of you will just be able to do this and if you're able to do that what you're going to do is you're going to do this at least 25 times once an hour. Okay? Once an hour. You're also going to do this forwards 25 times once an hour. Okay? If you can't do that with Un can't do that unassisted, then you're going to use the wall as well to crawl up in that direction. Going up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, and you're going to do the same procedure only in this position. The next procedure you're going to do is you're going to turn around completely, all the way around, all the way around, more, 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 turn, just relax your arm, turn around, put it down, and back against the wall. The procedure that you're going to do now, let's say this was her good arm, okay? We're going to use the arm that was worked on and she's going to put it as far back against the wall as possible this way, holding her hand back against the wall. If she, and then she's going to try to touch the other shoulder to the wall and bring the other hand up and back. What she's going to do now, she's going to push this hand backward as hard as she can into the wall. 1,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 and relax. Then she's going to do it again and push it back into the wall. Push the hand, push the hand, push the hand. If there's some difficulty doing that, she can actually help herself. She can hold her wrist with the other hand, pushing it down. Try to keep the shoulder back as far as possible so this arm will be straighter. Okay? And then she's going to push against her own hand in this direction. She's going to hold it. You need to use the whole hand. Breathe. Push. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 and then she's going to try to keep it there and always try to bring this opposite shoulder back as far as possible but unfortunately of course you can't contort your body quite that much so she'll have to do it that way. The, the ideal eventually is to be able to do it unassisted with both hands. You can see in her case it's only been a month since the procedure that there's still a slight restriction in that particular range of motion which is often the case.